Good evening. A late start today. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, this is episode number, episode number 746. And the topic today is actually a quote from Wayne Dyer, which is, well, I'm misquoting it. He said he cannot, I'm saying he will not be lonely um, if you like the person you're alone with. And that's pretty self-explanatory, but I want to break it down a bit more, use some tips, some reasons why it doesn't work maybe for you and why it can work for you. So before I jump into that, in greater detail, let me choose myself so you know I am and explain why I'm doing this so late from my usual time in case you haven't, in case you usually watch me earlier. I'll try and say that clearly. My name is Barry Selby. Hi, welcome to my broadcast. Um, my name, I am a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work and why I do these talks every day. Started over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring, and Feminine Heart. This is episode number 746, as I mentioned, and the topic today is about loneliness and love, or I should say loneliness and self-love. Excuse me, I'm trying to say that clearly. Again, episode 746, and top, the title again is, um, you will not be lonely if you like the person you're alone with. And that's a Wayne Dyer quote, by the way, so I'm using his quote as a platform to explain this from. And again, this is a later broadcast than usual. Um, usually I do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live in case you haven't seen this before. If you watch it on YouTube, I'll explain how you can see it later on, uh, the links and everything. I was at a movie screening for a friend of mine that I wanted to go see tonight and I didn't have time whilst I was there or get a good signal to do the broadcast live, so I said, I'll do it now. Now I'm home and complete. So I did a talk, um, I did a very brief talk on Saturday or Friday. Yes, a little late. <laughs> Hi, Jermaine. Good to see my broadcast. Um, yeah, I don't know what time zone you're in, actually. I'm not sure how late. I mean, it's late. It's 10.30 p.m. my time, West Coast, so I'm not sure if I'm in the same time zone or not. Um, I did a talk on Saturday. Saturday, that's right. Um, and I was talking about how my, I have a plan to, to I think I said, I could undermining the... I said, I said something that I was going to just, basically I said I was going to just wipe out um, codependence or erase, eradicate codependence as a mission is what I'm working on. So this is part of that in the sense that this is an explain about why you don't have to be codependent and why this is better, <laughs> simply put. So again, the quote being is really, and, it, and it's so self-explanatory, it's almost like I don't have to say anything else, which is you will not be lonely if you like the person you're alone with. This is the thing. Most people... This is very, um, how do you say this? This is very uh, rudimentary research. I can't say it's actually documented white proof. But most people tend to look for love outside themselves. Like, that's a big surprise. Those people are the ones swiping on the apps oftentimes, or going through the dating apps, dating sites, many people looking for something, looking for love. As I like to coin from the song, looking for love in all the wrong places, because they keep looking to find love filled up from outside themselves. And like very, very light Chinese food, you get hungry. So, oh wow, late, yes, you are late, Jermaine. <laughs> One thirty-four in the morning. Yes, oh, you're East Coast, yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate you staying up, but if you're really too tired, please feel free to watch this in replay in the morning. It will be around still. Um, but thank you for joining me anyway. So, the paradigm people are, 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 are focused on is looking for love out there to fill themselves up, but like very light Chinese food, it's like you eat it, but then you're hungry two hours later. The, the love you get from outside is not sustaining as much as people think romantically it is. Unfortunately, it's not unless it's completely re unless it's continually reapplied again and again and again. If you've been in relationships like this, it's almost like you, you're with someone who is an addict who needs to get a fix every two minutes of love, where they basically need to know that they need to know that you are loving them by proving to them that you love them, and that can get really messy really fast. This is really the core of what codependence is really about. Codependence is literally the dependence upon somebody else to, co to cohabitate what you need from them. And the, what I talk about is the alternative, which I recommend highly, is called interdependence, because none of us really can be in a relationship and not want, desire, or prefer something from somebody else, or have somebody else do something for us we can't do for ourselves. Part of a relationship is that enjoyment of having both sides of that involved. The thing about this, though, and this is, the, this is the, the dance, the nuance, is that if you are in a relationship to find somebody who makes you feel whole because they love you so much, that's a codependent move. It might be necessary for a period of time, but it's still codependent. Whereas if it's something where 
your partner cooks amazing food that you would like to learn how to cook more of, that's kind of an interdependent thing. You don't need it, but you'd love that addition to the relationship. So codependence, interdependence are very different things. Interdependence, bottom line, is healthy. Codependence, codependence generally is not healthy. The reason it's because it's unhealthy is because you are playing victim to the behavior of the other person. This whole conversation about codependence, and I'm going to get back to the light piece in a moment. I didn't want to get too far off track. This codependence paradigm we play in, where, where people are dependent upon the other person, means that if the other person doesn't do what you want, you get upset. But the thing is, when you say you get upset, that's not putting you in a power position. That's putting you in the victim position. Because your mood is being affected by what they do or don't do. That codependent paradigm means that they could say they don't love you anymore and you'll be heartbroken or upset and distorted because your need of love from them is being cut off. That's an extreme case, but it could be something simple as they don't show up on time and you get upset because they're not showing up on time if that's one of your things. Well, if you're not attached to them as in codependent, it won't matter if they don't show up on time. You won't like it, but you won't be upset by it. But it's the investment of upset that is really one of the biggest problems with codependence because it puts you in a place where your upset is a um, hmm, like a booby trap for their behavior. They do something or don't do something and it upsets you and you react and respond to that. And that is basically an antagonistic move. It's basically being a puppet on strings. You are the puppet, by the way, because you're not in control of your own emotional reaction because you're reacting to what they do versus making a choice to react to what they do. Very different. Interdependence does allow you to respond to things that aren't working and be very clear about it. And you can be upset if you need to be, but you choose every step of the way. But when you're not in choice point anymore, that's codependence. And that's when you're out of control. That's when you're a victim of their behavior. And when you're not actually being in, in your own authority. Anyway, that's the part that I'm not going to go too far. I've talked about that before, but I want to come back to this thing about um, you won't feel alone. There's another piece I want to just throw in here, which is this, this assumption people have that lonely and alone are, two, are the same thing, and they're not. Lonely is where you feel like you need somebody else to be around you. Again, codependent. You won't feel great unless somebody else is around you. Alone means you are on your own. Sounds like the same thing, but it's different. And for a lot of people, that loneliness comes out of the fact they don't really love themselves or don't like who they are. And a lot of people won't admit this, I know, but I'm sure the research will bear this out. If somebody did the research, I'm not doing it, but I'm aware of this, is that for most people, they would rather be with somebody else than be with themselves. Meaning they'd rather fill up their time with somebody else in their life than spend time alone because they don't have, they're not really good friends with themselves. And it's a shame in a way because if you want to be with somebody else in a relationship, wouldn't it be nice to think that you're a nice enough person they want to be with you? So why don't you, why don't you like yourself? If you don't like yourself, is the other person being crazy because they like you? <laughs> I mean, you understand the distorted logic that goes on with this. So learning how to love yourself, to like yourself, to appreciate who you are, to enjoy being in your own company is a huge step towards having healthy relationships with everybody else because it puts you back in the driver's seat. It gives you autonomy. It puts you in charge of your own choices and it gives you a responsibility of your own emotional responses. It gives you freedom. So to like yourself is, sorry, excuse me, to um, like yourself when you're alone is a pivotal part of a lot of people's work to understand that who they are is good enough, who they are is worthy, who they are is great, who they are is wonderful. It's becoming right, kind of the core element of my work with my clients now more than ever. I mean, the work, relationship work I do is vital, but the thing is, and the thing is not but, and the thing is that underneath that is the understanding of what it means to be a whole um complete person if you want a better word again because as I said what people like to do some of my clients will come to me and say they want, they want me to help them find their partner but my first question is well what's your relationship with yourself like and it's not my first question it's one of my early questions because without knowing that I don't know where they're coming from and if they are coming from a place that is lacking self-support self-love self-trust I'll work with them on that first because I want them to have the best relationship they can have which isn't going to support their weakness it's going to support their strength. And that's why I'm very passionate about speaking against codependence, to stamp it out, to, to remove it, to eradicate it from society, so to speak, but also so that it gives you some clues that who you are is deserving and worthy of relationship 
so you can love yourself when you're single as much as you do when you're in a relationship. So the key I want to give you is that loving yourself first is one of the best steps while single you can make towards having a healthy relationship. You don't wait till they show up. You start loving yourself now because first of all, you won't need them to show up. And secondly, it actually makes you more attractive because if you notice people who are more attractive out there, usually the ones that take care of themselves and love themselves. I don't, I don't mean who are, are self-sycophants. They just don't have a problem with loving. They're not egotistically based. They're just loving the way they are. Um, I think that's it. I think there's anything else on that one. I think the point is very clear. So let me give you a couple of thoughts. If you're stuck on this, I can help you with it. So I'll give you a couple of links to check out. One is my, my, my self-love guided meditation practice I recommend. I'll put the link in the comments for that. It's um, two audio tracks and a guidebook to get you started. Um, on top of that is, uh, what's the other one? Well, discovery session with me, make it easy. You have questions, want to work out how to find a bit of love in your life to be really connected to the right place to love yourself first, let's talk. I have a complimentary, complimentary discovery session that they give as a gift. I'll put the link in the comments for that as well. And uh, that will keep you going. Right. So, Jermaine. Wow, so true on this human issue. Thank, you're very welcome. Thank you, Jermaine, for watching. Thanks for the love and all the hearts. Um, also, by the way, this is my Facebook Live. I do usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you haven't seen me before, this is a late night broadcast. Come join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time normally, which will be tomorrow. Um, secondly, the replays go onto my business page on Facebook. Oh, personal page is Barry Selby on Facebook. Business page on Facebook is Barry Selby, the author. The replays go onto my YouTube channel as well because better to keep more than one place. And that's uh, my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. All my social media is Barry Selby. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Please subscribe to my channel and like my business page and watch the replays. I think that's everything. <laughs> Remember everything you're saying. So with having said that, I hope you got some, some value from this. And I do invite you to see how you can like yourself more than you already do. So you can enjoy being who you are. So when you're in a relationship, then you can be abundant in the overflow of loving who you are and loving them as well. I think that makes up a point. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. I'm, I'm calling it quits a little bit early tonight. It's a little bit shorter than usual because I'm tired. But I'll see you again tomorrow. Um, if you want to find out what I was doing tonight, there's posts on my wall of the event I was at, and you can check it out there. And, uh, and that's about it. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And I invite you to take care of yourself. I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye. <laughs>